Welcome to lesson five, which is all about components in Astro. Now we've already looked at kind of the basics of components in one of the very first videos, and we set up this nice layout component that has a slot where we can insert content from pages. In this case, what we're gonna do is build three separate components, one of them fairly basic that won't take in any props, a second one that will pass in some props through a data file that we pass it, and then a third one that will be a link component with a bunch of different variations that will give us a chance to go over a lot of the things we learned with CSS and just how to work with components in a real life scenario. So let's start in that order. We'll start with the most basic one, and that is I wanna put one right down here called a footer component. So I'm actually gonna have you try to do this first and then pause the video. And then when you play it again, I'll show you what I did. What I want is for this to look like this. It has a footer right here. And that when it renders, it just renders a footer that says footer in it. That's all I want. And I'll give you a hint. We're gonna actually build a new file over here or a new folder called components. And inside here is where you're gonna create a file called footer.astro. So all I want you to do is get that to show up in the main layout so it shows up on every page. All right, go ahead and I'll be right back with you. All right, well, hopefully you had a good go of that. What I'm gonna do is just come in here and type a footer right here. And in the middle of this, I'm gonna type footer. Now, I don't actually have to have the front matter up here since we're not using it, but obviously the front matter will be up here and then all the rendered HTML down below. So I'll save that. I'm gonna jump back over this way. Now this should be here. I'm gonna save it and it should yell at us because we did not import it. So I'm just gonna drag this down and change this and this to footer. And then in this case, I actually need to go up a level and go into components and then into footer and it's footer.astro. Okay, so that should show just like that and hopefully that's what you got. All right, so that's the basic component. Now I actually do wanna add one more thing in the footer component that gives us a chance to talk about one other thing which is client-side JavaScript. Now, client-side JavaScript isn't really a dirty word in Astro but it's not there unless you explicitly tell it to be there. So what we're gonna do is create a little section down here that reads out the copyright, including the current year. And it's always best to do that kind of thing on the client so that it's evergreen and you don't have to remember to like manually go back and update your site. Now what I'm gonna do is just add a small tag, which will make the text small. And then I'm gonna add inside of here copyright, and then I'll include the HTML symbol for the copyright symbol. And then I wanna span with an ID of copyright. This is where we'll insert the year with vanilla JavaScript in just a second. Next, I'll type a pipe character and then do all rights reserved. All right, so there it is, pretty basic. And if I save it, you can see it shows up over there on the right. Now we just need to add the, the year to it. Well, how do you add client-side JavaScript? You might think, well, we can write JavaScript, we'll just write it right up here. The problem with that is that it's actually only going to work when you build. It's not gonna be on the client because remember, all of this is just for the build. Well, you might say, well, I have to template stuff out. Maybe I actually add it in some kind of bracketed syntax. But again, that's only for the build. So how do we get it on the client? Well, if you want something on the client, you just include a script tag just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then let's close the sidebar. Inside here is where you can write vanilla JavaScript and then it will actually bundle all this together on build and make it available as a module. So let's just do this. Let's do document.query selector. And all I wanna do is select anything with the ID of copyright, which should only be this. And then I'm gonna update the text content. This is now going to be equal to a new date. So based on where, whenever they come, it will look at their browser, look at their time, grab a new date. Then what I wanna do is set this to get full year. And then finally, I wanna say to string. That way I make sure that it's a string being inserted here as text content. Now, when I save this, it should actually update and give me 2022 over here. So client-side JavaScript is possible in Astro. You just have to explicitly tell it, I want you to put it on the client. And that's what we've done here. So that's the first component we've created. The second one is going to be a nav component. So let me shut this down and then we're gonna open up the sidebar and under components, I'm gonna add another file and this is gonna be called nav.astro. In this case, we're actually going to pull in data in the head matter, so I'll leave it there. But everything else will be inside of this nav element. Now this gives me a chance to reiterate something I said in the last video, and that is that I've really tried hard to make it to where you don't have to type a bunch of classes. You can just focus on writing Astro and not have to worry about the CSS. The downside to that is you've got to basically type stuff exactly as I do, or things may not work properly. So for instance, you do need an ARIA label here because we're going to have another navigation item later. So an uh, ARIA label like that, and it needs to say primary just like that. If you do something else, it won't style it correctly. Now everything inside of this is going to be inside of a class called navbar. And again, you need to have that to make sure everything is styled correctly. The long and short of this is I don't want you to have to constantly be typing out CSS when you're trying to learn Astro. So I've tried to do that work for you, but it's a little janky as far as CSS goes itself. 
Now, inside here, we're gonna have two things. We're gonna first have an anchor link, and this is gonna point back to the homepage. And you do need to have an RE label on this as well, because it's just gonna be an icon, so you need to actually tell it what it does. So here, we're gonna say go home. And then we're also gonna give this thing a class. So we'll say class of logo mark. Now, in a second, we're gonna add an icon into here. But the other thing we're going to need is a UL. This is where the actual nav items will be displayed inside of li tags. Now this component gives me a chance to talk about two separate things. First, I wanna show you how to work with libraries in Astro. And secondly, I wanna show you how to loop through data. So let's start with the libraries. If you come over to the integrations, there are some really cool integrations. One of them built by one of the makers of Astro is called Astro Icon, and it's really cool. What I'm gonna do is just open up the terminal, close that down and type npm i Astro Icon. All right, once that installs, I'm gonna do npm run dev and get this back up and running. And then as you come down here, you're gonna notice that we get access to several things. First of all, you've got a bunch of official icon sets here that you can pull in so you don't have to have them anywhere in your directory and it will just create these SVG icons for you. The other thing you can do is have local icons and they recommend you put it in an icons folder. In fact, I think you need to. So you put it inside of an icons folder and then any SVG icons will then be minified and placed directly inside of your HTML. Now, the benefit of embedding SVGs is that you don't have to go do a fetch for a little tiny SVG. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's open up the sidebar. Inside this SRC folder, I'm going to add in here a folder called icons. Next, we're going to open up this public directory and just copy over this icons. And I just held down the option key on my Mac to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Let's call it something like uh, logo mark.svg. And what we'll do then is transform that dynamically right here. Either this way, or if you're pulling from one of these packs, either way, you can use this same import. Then like you see here, all I have to do is pass it the name. So let's come in here and I'm gonna say icon like this, name equals, and it equals logo mark. Now you don't have to do logo mark SVG, just leave it just like that. And then you can pass in other attributes as you need to. So for instance, I'm gonna pass in width of 60. Now when I save this, if I jump back over this way, you'll see nothing's in yet because we haven't actually added it but let's go ahead and pull this in our main layout. So right inside here, this main layout, I'm gonna pull in my nav. If I start typing, again, that extension is gonna let me auto import. So I'll do that. And I just wanna make sure that this goes with the rest of my custom imports. So pull that in and there it is right there, the custom icon. Now I can go ahead and inspect this and you'll see if I pull this down, that it's actually inserted the icon directly in here and it's actually passed along that width attribute to it, which is really cool. So that's how we're gonna use this icon library to minify our SVGs. Now I also mentioned that inside of this UL is where all of our nav items are going to be displayed. Now we're gonna do that by looping through some data we pass in. I'm gonna pass that in through a folder here called data. Inside here, I'm gonna have a file called navdata.js. And I'm just gonna paste in a very basic array. We could obviously just include this in the nav component itself, but I just wanna show you how you can import data in Astro. So here it is, it's just JavaScript and it's a default export. So I'll go ahead and save that and then jump over this way. And up top here, what I wanna do is come in here and do like data uh, imports. Maybe up top here, we say something like, uh, let's call it library imports. So let's go ahead and import. And I'm gonna call it the same thing, even though I could call it whatever I want since it's a default export, let's call it nav data. And I wanna import that from as a relative path here, I wanna go into my data and then my nav data. Now that I have access to this as nav data, I can loop through this using our bracketed syntax. So I'll simply say nav data dot map, and I've got an item, and all I wanna do is output here a link, and for my href, I wanna point this to item dot, and I've got name or path that are already showing me from that import, that's really nice, and then I can come over here and say item dot name. So if I save this, they should pull in, and there they do right there, now, if yours doesn't look just like that, it may be because you didn't change around something I messed up in the last video. I added a note about it, but you wanna make sure that this says plugins like that, and then you might need to restart your server. So not plugin, but plugins. And if you, you restart your server, it should look something very much like that where there's a little bit more space between them. All right, now that's fine and good, but we've got one more component we need to add. So we'll create that last component, which is gonna be a link component that we can use all throughout the site that will be really customizable based on what we need. Then I wanna add a little bit of vanilla JavaScript to the bottom of this nav component, and I'll show you a different way you can actually include JavaScript in a component. All right, so let's start with creating a link component. So I'm gonna come over here and type link.astro. Now, once again, we've got front matter, and that's where we'll start. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that you can use TypeScript directly in Astro. Now, we're not going to do that mostly throughout this project, but I do want to do it just in this component to show you the use of it, since we didn't really get to explore that last time. So if I say interface and props, let's just list off the things we might want. Well, we know we need text, so let's add text as a string. I also need an href since this is a link, so that will also be a string. And then we're going to add five other options. So first of all, I want a style, and you need to actually select a style. So we're going to leave it as a required statement, primary, and secondary. Next, I want you to be able to include an icon if you'd like to. And there's a few things I want to be true about it. So that little question mark means that this is optional. And we're going to pass in an object here with two different properties a name, which will be required if you pass an icon in, and a side, which will also be required. Sides you can choose between are left and right. In other words, you can have it showing on either side, depending on what you pass in. Three more now. I want you to be able to decide whether or not it's going to be filled. And let's pass this in as a Boolean. And then I'll copy this down. This will be border visible. So I want you to be able to say, hey, I want to see the border or I don't want to see the border. And then finally, I want to be able to pass in some extra classes if I want to. And again, this will be optional, just like the other four up above it. And it will be a string. Now, we haven't yet taken any of these things into the component. So let's grab all of these. And let's destructure these from astro.props. So const equals, and then we're going to say astro.props as props. And we're saying as props because it's pointing to this interface right here. So what do we want in here? Well, it's the exact same things we defined up top, except I obviously don't need to pass in like string and all this kind of stuff. So let me clean all this up, put commas after it, and I'll be right back with you. Before we actually write it, there are three more things I want to do. The first is I want to pass in defaults here. So I want it to be true by default as far as whether or not it's filled, and I want this to be false by default. The final thing I want to do is pass in a rest prop like this. In other words, anything else I pass to it, I want to be able to just drop into the tag of the anchor link, and I can do that with this spread operator and pass in a rest. Like I mentioned, this component is a little bit more complex, but I want to show you what you can do with Astro. And also, this will give us a chance to review several of the things we talked about with CSS. Next, let's come down here and let's actually just add this as an anchor link. So this is what's going to be returned from this component. Now, this should be pretty plain. What I need here is my href passed along. I know inside here I need an icon and I also need the text. So we'll come back to those. For now, let's go ahead and fill out the rest of this opening tag. And what I want is my href. Next, I want my classes. Now, I could just type class like this, but the right way I wrote my CSS, I actually want to pass this a class list. And then inside bracketed syntax here, I want to pass in an array. Now, again, this class colon list directive allows you to pass in strings or sets or arrays or objects so that you can basically customize the experience based on what you need. And you can have a lot more dynamic values without a bunch of extra syntax. So let's pass in a few things. First of all, I know each one of these is going to need a class of link. So if I add it just like that as a string, it will be added directly to the anchor link. Next, any classes that are passed in, I want to spread in here. And since this is just going to be a string, it will just be a string of classes and I can add them in directly like that. If they're not there, then nothing will be added there. Next, I, I forced people to write a style. So they have to choose either primary or secondary, and that will be used to style the color of the button. So I'm going to again pass that one in. And then finally, I'm going to pass in an object here with two different uh, properties. One will be called filled, and that will only show as the string filled if is filled is true, which by default it is. And then finally, I'm going to pass in another class of bordered, which will only show if border visible is true, which by default it's not. So that's all the classes, and you can see how I've got just plain old props being passed in here. I've also got a string, I've also got objects, and all of this is possible in this class list directive. Now I know why I called this classes, because class is a reserved word in JavaScript, and all this up here is JavaScript. You can't use class, if I remember correctly, so that's why I have to type it as classes. Now inside this anchor link opening tag, I want to do one more thing, and that is I want to spread in the rest operator. In other words, anything else I pass in here, like a data attribute, will just be added directly to the front of this anchor link. All right, that leaves only the icon left. So let's do this. I want to have a couple different options. So I want an icon here as an option if it's on the left. I want an icon down here as an option if it's on the right. And then in the middle, I'm going to have a span tag. And in the middle of this, I will just have the text of the button itself, the text of the link. Now, when it comes to showing these icons, I first want to check that they have passed in an icon because you don't have to. And then if they have, I'll use a logical and, I want to figure out the icon dot side. If it equals left like this, then once again with a double ampersand, 
I want to return an icon. So icon just like this, and I want the name to be equal to the icon.name. I want the height to be 24, and I want the width to also be 24, and those will just be passed along. Now there's a couple things we need to do, and then I'll talk you back through that. So if I come back over here, the first thing I need to do is copy in this, because I need the same thing in this file since it's using that import. All right, so now that should work right here, and then let me talk you through this. So what I'm doing is I'm checking that they've actually passed in an icon. If they've passed in an icon, it's going to have two properties, name and side. I'm checking the side, and if it's on the left, then what I want to do is grab the name and drop it in in this name slot. And then once again, I'm passing in the height and the width as different attributes to the actual icon component. And what I can do is just copy all of this and add it in directly down here, and I can change this to right. And if it's supposed to be in the right, now it will show up on the right. Now, it can't be both of these at the same time, so that means one of these will never show, and the other one might show if they passed in an icon. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save that, but we have yet to actually use this anywhere. So let's come back over here, and let's convert this anchor link to our new special link that we just created. So I'm going to get rid of all that, come in here, and I'm going to start typing link like that, and it should auto-import that component. And here it is right here, so let's bring it up here maybe, and I'll add like component imports. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out this tag, and you'll see I'm getting a red underline, and that's because the kind of relaxed TypeScript option that I chose when we first set up the project will tell me, hey, there's some required things you need to put in here. And if I hit Control and Spacebar, it will show me what those are. So you can see that these ones without the question mark are required. So I need to have a text, a style, and an href. So let's start with the text. And just like I have with my plain old anchor link, I want this to point to item.name. Let's go next to the href. This should be item.path. And then for my style, you can see IntelliSense there saying it has to be primary or secondary. So let's start with primary. And as soon as I save that, you see it actually shows just like this. Now you can see if I change this over to secondary and I save it, now it takes on a purple color. Now I had a couple other options here. I could have is filled. By default, that's set to true, but I can set it to false. Now you might think you can set it to false like this, but that's a string of false. I actually have to pass in bracketed here, false, just like that. And now it's not filled. And that's actually what I want it to look like. If I wanted there to be a string around it, though, I could say border visible, and I could say true, and now it would have a, string, a ring around it. And I don't actually want that in this case. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now, you can also pass in things through that rest spread operator that we passed. So for instance, if I said something like data dash nav link like this, then that would actually be passed on. And just to show you that, I'll go ahead and open this up. And you can see how that data attribute was passed on directly to those links. Now we also talked about the icon, but I've yet to show you actually the icons where you can find them. So if you come back over here, you'll notice that in addition to local icons, like I said earlier, you can actually use these icon packs powered by Iconify. So I've just opened it up over here and you can look at pretty much anything you want. So let's maybe let's just grab something from Google icons and we'll grab this. Sure. Just copy it right here. And if I were to come in here and pass an icon like that, it takes in two things that have to be an object. Now, this bracketed syntax lets me pass things in, but it's not itself an object. So I have to actually add the object here. And now I have two options. I have name. This needs to be a string, and it's what I just copied. And then I need a side. And this can be either left or right. So let's go left to start with. So let me save that and jump back over this way. And there you go. I get this icon here. And again, it's just embedded that directly in the page. That's pretty cool. Now I can come back over here and do right. I could come back up here and say primary, and then remove this so that the default filled shows. Change this back to secondary, and now I get that purple color. All this is possible because of the way that we set up that astro component. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this icon for now because that's actually exactly what we want it to look like. And I've actually added special styling just to this with the data link so that way it stays as this black color no matter what, even if you change this over to secondary. So I promise one more thing, and that is to add some more client-side JavaScript. What we want is for it to determine if any of these nav links are the current page. Now, once again, to include client-side JavaScript, you have to add a script tag. This, In this case, though, I'm not going to actually write it directly in here. Just to show you that you can do this, you can actually import JavaScript instead. So what I want to do is come up. We're going to go into a JS folder, and then we'll look at nav.js. Now, this doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create that. So over here, I'll say JS. And then inside here, I'm going to write a nav.js file. If I come back over here and I save it, let's just go ahead and add something like console.log in the nav. 
All right, and then let's open it up over this way in the nav. All right, so it's working, perfect. Now, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna grab all the nav links, and since we added that data attribute, let's use that data attribute to grab these in JavaScript. So I'll say const nav links, document.query selector all, and I just wanna select anything that is data-nav link. Then let's loop through each of those, so nav links, and then I'll do a dot for each method, and I'm just going to grab each link and I'll ask a simple question. If the link dot get attribute and the attribute I want is href, if that equals the window dot location dot path name, then I want to say link dot set attribute. The attribute I want to set is aria current and I want to set that to page. Now, if I did that correctly, it should actually add aria current to either of these pages if I'm on that page. Now, I'm not on any of those pages, so let's go over to this about page. And now you can see that that's exactly what it's done. If I come up here and I look at here, it says aria current equals page. Now it's done that because that's the route that I'm at and it's checked it as soon as the nav was on the page. So that's another way you can use JavaScript in these components if you want it to be client side. Well, we've now learned some more about Astro components, including how to create these really complex ones that let you do lots of customization, how to loop through data once again, how to import data, how to use libraries, how to write client-side JavaScript. All that's been in this video. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually start building out the blog page itself, and we're gonna add some markdown files to actually start creating our blog. So we'll work on routing in the next video, and I'll catch you there.